Okay, so we are in Unreal Engine 4. You can see our weapon is still here, but I've deleted all the shaders and all the textures that we created and imported in the previous tutorial. Uh, so let's import our new textures for our new shader. So for this one we will need albedo that has also ambient occlusion into uh, alpha channel. We will need also normal map and the roughness. And also our weapon mask. So we have four textures. We can skip the ambient occlusion because it's included into the albedo. So let's open. Okay, so we have all our textures imported. So let's go to a material folder and let's create a new material. Let's call it base, weapon base. Let's open the material material editor and we will start creating this. Okay, so let's bring this one, this one, this one, and also we have to drag uh, masks texture. So what we can do at the beginning is plugging normal map And let's get started with these masks. So we have these masks because we want to control a colors on our basic albedo texture. So to use these masks, we will have to use a multiply node. You can click M on your keyboard and left click to bring a multiply node. And let's bring also some things like layers. You can click just L on your keyboard and left mouse button and also you can bring this layer. And what we need also is just uh, a node that is called a vector parameter and this node will control our color so let's try to make it work at the beginning we have to multiply our base texture by the parameter node let's call it uh, stop color and we have to lerp this in this way we will use these masks to put to the alpha channel And I'm going to choose this one. Currently in our viewport there is nothing because we didn't plug this layer to the base color. Let's do this. And currently you can see that everything is black except this main color. It's not exactly what we want. So let's do some changes. Let's try this way. Okay, so this way it works. 
and changing values in this parameter vector parameter will make a changes to to the color of the weapon so you can see this main basic this main top part of the weapon is changing colors let's zoom in into this part so let's make it more like our default weapon Something like this, let's say, will be okay for the beginning. Okay, so you can see by this vector parameter node, we are able to control the color of this specific area on the texture. Let's bring it here. And we can press C on our keyboard to make a comment on this. top color so we have three other parts of our weapon that we want to change colors so we have to create additional nodes for this so let's duplicate this clicking ctrl w we want to also duplicate a vector parameter node Let's change the name of this. Let's say uh, back color. Let's put it to black. And we want also this mask, so Ctrl W. We have to bring left and multiply. So let's do this one more time. We have to connect these two. And right now we have to choose uh, which mask we are going to use. For this example, let's try uh, green maybe. so right now we have something like two layers and right now we have to connect these two layers in order to display both parts of the weapon uh, so let's disconnect this one let's create another layer and of course one will be for a the second will be for the B and we have to use again uh, some kind of alpha and in this case we are going to use this mask that is on the blue channel because we want to mask the first channel that was used and let's see if this will work So you can see this back part of the weapon which is here and here is black that means it's it's working but we have a black color here so that's why the back part of the weapon is black let's change the color and see if this will change yes it's changing so everything is okay let's pick something like a white if we choose a white color it will be just a default color let's maybe do the same here right now our weapon have a default color colors so we have two 
nodes, two LERPs, one is for top color and the second one is for back color. So we've got the third one to make. Uh, let's maybe select this box and control W. It will be faster. But let's change the channel to red this time. Let's put a black or something like this to see the result in the viewport when we connect them. And of course we have to create another layer that will, will connect this layer and this layer. So our shader tree is getting bigger and bigger. So let's do this. So this one will be for the A and this one will be for the B. Let's disconnect. And we have to also use a mask. And let's mask the extra green channel. So let's change the color of our parameter node. And it's changing this middle part. So everything works fine. Let's press C and let's call it uh, mid color because this is a middle part of the weapon. So let's set this to default white color. So we have our three nodes, three big parts of the tree for each color of the weapon that we can control now. So what now, what next? Let's maybe save this and I will show you how this works in the viewport actually. Let's click apply. And to make this shader work, we have to find this one, it's here. And let's click and create meta material instance. So when we open the material instance, you will be able to see that we have uh, uh, only two parameters because we forget to change the name of this third one. Let's go back and let's fix this. So this should have a different name. mid color and let's apply and let's now open this you can see we have three values here this is back color this is mid color this is top color so let's maybe change this top color for something different working Let's check it again. Let's actually apply this to our 
weapon so you can see it works it was something weird with the preview of this uh, material so you can see right now everything works let's set this to white and let's check this the top part which is not working still so i found what was wrong in order to make it work we have to add multiply here to merge uh, these two uh, mask layers and right now let's put this to alpha if we apply this everything should work fine and we will be able to see changes on our material so you can see right now let's set this to zero this to zero to make again everything default and the good thing about these parameters is that we can see immediately changes in the viewport so i'm going to show you right now let's change this top color for example and you can see everything is changing in fly so we can really quickly create something that is uh, good for us let's stick with something like this or maybe let's do something more like a winter colors or something so you can see a very easy way to make our shaders of course this is not the end of the process we have to create uh, for example uh, ambient occlusion for this because we have ambient occlusion in the alpha channel so let's actually add this ambient occlusion node at the end after the layer so let's copy the main texture and let's put this in here and we will use just a multiply node So you now now you can see that we have ambient occlusion and if we put it like this we don't have ambient occlusion so we want to keep of course ambient occlusion that's why we bring this mask to use it let's make some changes and immediately we can see a changes in the viewport let's go further and let's create a, a dust we have dust of course that needs to be applied to the uh, our weapon uh, and we want to control this dust we want to control a color and op opacity of this dust so I'm going to show you right now uh, how to do that so we will need of course uh, our mask so let's control w to duplicate we will need a vector parameter node 
so let's maybe duplicate this one of course remember to change the name of the vector parameter node so let's do this let's call it uh, dust color so this one will control the color of the dust and this is will this will be mask uh, that will control where this dust should appear so let's of course create layers and we want to connect these two so of course this is for alpha And of course, uh, this will be here, so this will be here. So this way, you can see we have a lot of the dust, but we have a white dust. We have ability of course to change the color of this dust uh, but we would like to also uh, pull it down a little bit because right now it's at its maximum so we want to create a multiply node and a, a color parameter Color pa parameter is something like a vector parameter, but it has just only one value. So we will use it to multiply our alpha mask. And you see right now changes. If the color parameter is zero, we have no effect and when we turn it up uh, our dust is appearing so when we put it to something like 0 0.1 it's a very uh, soft result we want to increase it and it works with no problems So this way we are able to just turn off, for example, the dust completely. So let's put the name here, uh, dust opacity. Okay, so let's see how it works in the viewport. Of course, all changes that we are making is to this material, base material, are transferred to the instance material. So let's zoom out a little bit. Let's open the material instance. And let's play with this dust. Let's turn on the opacity and you can see this dust is appearing. Let's change the color. So you can see it looks more like this one that we created in Photoshop. But of course, this one can be adjusted in the shader rather than just uh, importing another texture to Unreal. So this kind of shaders are really nice and flexible. We can create a tons of different weapons just using the textures that we've imported. So of course that's not everything because we didn't touch a gloss uh, channel yet and we want to also use a gloss texture because we've imported this texture also. 
so let's see what we can do there if we plug this in we will just get nice results let's preview this so it looks more like a metal right now everything is correct except the the dust if we turn on the dust we don't want in these places any specular going on any reflections so we want to set up uh, a workflow in our shader to increase the roughness uh, when the dust is on so let's quickly see how we can do something like this so it's pretty simple because we want to add to this texture uh, the mask that is stored in the alpha channel of this texture mask but of course uh, we want this texture to be affected by this parameter so we want to grab uh, this node and connect it to this texture and we will do this by creating an add node you can press a on your keyboard and let's connect this one with this one let's see maybe what will this do when we plug this into a base color so you can see right now we are displaying our roughness texture and when we increase our dust opacity let's set it to one a white mask is appearing on our dust uh, on our uh, gloss texture when we go with something like 0.5 it's decreasing so everything is working okay let's plug this back to base color and this one will be plugged to roughness so you can see when we have this heavy dust there is no uh, specular or reflections going on the surface of the dust So let's click apply and let's really check it. Let's go with the something, some extreme values. Let's go with the dust opacity one. And you can see there is completely no opacity or and no reflections or specular on the surface where the dust so this was a really heavy example let's go with something normal so let's save everything okay so i have one more thing to show uh, let's create something like metalness let's open this texture let's turn off this dust as default okay everything works uh, let's do this metalness because uh, this is something that i want to show you let's create a let's press one on our keyboard and click and this brings us uh, this node where we can type one parameter one value so let's apply this to metalness metallic this is called metallic or metalness 
so nothing is changing but let's increase this let's say uh, one and this is very extreme example but you can see already that our surface looks more like a metal so let's try something like this so this helps a little bit creating this metal feel to the surface but when we will apply it you will see that this will be applied to uh, all parts of the weapon so I think it looks a little bit better with this metalness but of course I want to mask some parts of the weapon because for example this part and this part is not really that metal it's probably some kind of plastic or something like this so let's build a really quick mask to do this so let's bring this here to have more space of course we need again this mask texture ctrl w to bring this so we can delete this for now and let's create two of these one will have a value of 0 0.4 and the second one will have just one and we have to create a layer and of course this will be used as an hour mask and applied to the alpha channel so let's try to connect this and this will be used uh, this will be using uh, two channels so we want to multiply them the red channel and the green channel because we want to mask uh, two parts of the weapon and these parts will not be using metalness and of course we want to flip these channels because this is a little bit incorrect and to invert the texture we are using something like one minus and this will invert the, these masks So let's connect this to our metalness. So let's see if this is working or not. Let's go with the one. So you can see this part of the weapon where the metal is, is overblown or something like this. Actually this should be zero. Yes, this should be zero and this will be 0 0.4. So this is more like a plastic and this is more like a metal. So let's apply this and let's see changes. A very subtle effect but we can right now definitely tell that this is probably more plastic material and this is more like a metal and these black parts are definitely metal. So Let's maybe do some uh, examples to show you how this instance material is working. So let's leave this weapon with this material and let's create another one. Let's create material instance from this base, base shader and this will be called weapon base instance 2. So let's 
So here uh, I've got some other weapon that apply this one. So this right now is our basic material applied. Let's open this material instance and do we want to use some we want to make some changes. What changes we can make? Let's say we can add some dust. And actually the dust default color is set to uh, white. So you can see right there we can achieve some kind of snow or the ice look. So it looks pretty okay. We can of course change the, the, the colors of the weapon. We can of course change the color of the dust. But I will keep this uh, white for this example. The middle color, let's bring something more. This is maybe also for the top part something more blue. Of course, uh, the shader is not perfect, so not all the colors are uh, available. But we can make some some changes to the color of the weapon. can see by adjusting these values over the one we are able to achieve some uh, more some better results okay I was trying to make something like this some kind of uh, bluish colors on this weapon covered with some ice or something like this that looks pretty okay. So let's make maybe another example. We will just duplicate this one. Let's maybe do it more default and let's create another copy of this material. And this will be pretty much dark default color. So no dust right now. Let's create something very dark. Still getting some kind of bluish tint. Around the same thing. So you can see we have something like a dark weapon. No dust yet. We can add this uh, 
it's cool. So dust. And our dust just got some weird values. So we have to tweak this. Probably make two more changes if we go too deep with the opposite values it will affect our dust so you should keep this in mind but let's create this dust with some normal color not as snow so you can see we are able to create lots of different colors of this weapon lots of different shaders using the same textures this is the basic one this is the black one and this is the blue one with the snow and we have also this one which is pretty similar to this one with the snow but this one with was with the dust so let's bring this one here also so you can see how all these weapons looks i hope you like this part because the tutorial was very long and I was constantly waiting for this part which is the most interesting because we have already our weapon in the engine of course I have to make textures for the other parts like a magazine, a laser sight and a scope and a grip also I will skip a texturing process of these parts because we have tons of material for this one and this will be nothing new I will use Dido and some basic uh, stuff so nothing too advanced I will show you the final result with the scope, laser sight, grip, magazine and I will show you how to create uh, some of the things for the scope so see you in next part